Attack on Titan, attack on my sanity more fucking like. This tidally ridden blood pumper anime has more mysteries than Cluedo. More secrets and conspiracies than President Bush's run in the White House. Where did Titans come from? Who can we trust? Will Levi and Owen just fuck already? And what's in the basement? Let's get down to clown and put our possible spoiler glasses on as we rev this Titan a new one. That's right ladies and gentlemen, we're talking fan theories. Ever notice how Attack on Titan is super intimate with minor details? Even the littlest stuff can allude to mind-fucking realizations in the future. Like how Mikasa totally rigged Eren's maneuver gear to keep him out of the army. How, if you look close enough, Levi's obsessive cleaning OCD comes from living in the plague. The fact that it's Bert Holt who shows the female Titan where Eren is. And how Marco's corpse didn't have a collar because he never died. Yeah, the smallest detail, the most in- Wait, what? Marco's not dead? Yeah, this barbecue Marco corpse really isn't all that Marco-y. You call those freckles? You, you call those freckles? If I wasn't the Fleet Foxes loving bad bitch I am, I'd say this looks like a cover-up. For some reason or another, Marco wants to make people think he's dead. Because the alternative is that Marco ran into a flock of titans, put on a load of makeup, undressed in the middle of the siege, redressed, removing only his undershirt, and went on to a sunbathing holiday to steaming, burning titan hellfire. California. I just refuse to believe such a lovely, traumaless, perfect stallion could even exist in this world. So, where's he been? No one appreciates the choir, but we've seen him. He's been a naughty boy. The hooded figure that sidetracked Team Levi is mainly thought to be Annie, the ranked 4th best of the 104th trainees. But I don't know about you, but I'm not really seeing any... tits. Sorry to be obscene here, but I'm not really seeing many female features at all. And we know Berthold and Raina are off doing other cool things. This is because it wasn't the 4th best trainee. It was the 7th. This is someone with olive skin, masculine hands and a distinguished nose. Look at this panel. No maneuver gear because Annie and Marco are swapping their 3D gear like Pokemon cards. Watch this space. On this channel we want to blow minds, we don't want to go too far. Nobody wants to get wasted and start talking about time travel. Oh. Oh damn. Yeah, people have actually gone there. My theory? The Titans may not be travelling through time, but they might be underground. So Attack on Titan Anime Season 1 ends on a shit yourself cliffhanger. Unless these guys face planted through a giant wall, Three giant walls, there are titans in the walls. The walls are this, and titans. Another fun and huge piece of info you almost definitely missed, the mid credit scene in the final episode tells of a miner who discovered that the walls go miles down underground, a huge and crazy feat. Impossible that society can barely keep its own citizens alive to have such an impressive construction feat. So here's the deal, turns out the titans are literally, they are the walls secreting a cement stone-like substance. And underneath, an underground level. A city which the key to the Jaeger basement unlocks. Because straight up fact, we know nothing about this world's history. Who was here first? Humans of the Titans, chicken of the egg. In fact, what do we know about this timeline? Hell, other than the architects and the German links, this could take place far in the future for all we know. Oh wait, this, that's, a, that's an actual theory? Huh. Well, whilst the architect and steampunk aesthetic of the franchise seem to say one thing, internet theorists claim that the lack of history knowledge, unhospitable landscapes, and biotech, you know, biological warfare, totally opens Attack on Titan to the fact that it could be a post-apocalyptic sci-fi story. They're all dressed too old and have oldy time equipment. Okay, well let's take a look at an equally horrific and emotionally abusive series. Futurama. This series, taking place in the 30th century, is a bricolage, a mismatch of influences, keeping many tech and social attitudes from both the sci-fi future and our time. Like uh, TV and sewers and iPads, but also flying cars and aliens and robots. The writers explain this is due to the results of various invasions and apocalyptic events in their history, humanity having to start over and over again with remnants of previous future tech in our case, 3D maneuver gear, extinction of social prejudices, and biotech titans. 
explaining the ambiguous time era. It's the confused world of the series. And finally... During my research for this editorial, one name kept propping up. After studying the series on closer inspection, it's become sublimely clear that one person is not to be trusted. Armin Alert. Keep an eye on Armin Alerts. We're going to go into fan theory territory now. This is a big claim to make about one of the most trustworthy and wimpy characters in the show, but there is a big case to make for him knowing more than he may let on. For starters, Armin, when translated, means warrior or bridge. He seems to have some sort of relationship with Reyna and Bertholdt and the Shifters, often getting paired with them via companies or just manga panels. They usually share reaction pages, which sort of associates them for no real reason. Putting two and two together and knowing that Annie is the female titan may be no difficulty for a reader, but Armin not only already knows this, but never really has a moment of shock realisation. He just says it calmly, as if he's known for a long time. Is that not enough to tie Armin with the Shifters? Well, okay, how about the fact that the Shifters know a lot about Eren from an early age? Is it possible they had a man on the inside? How coincidental was it that Armin spoke about how temporary and fragile the Trost Walls were the day before they were destroyed by the Shifters? That's some ace prediction skills. And then there's the big one. The Titan that ate Eren's mother bears uncanny likeness to our shady blonde Bulka. Armin mysteriously being the only main character in the first episode, not in this scene. This Titan too is treated very strangely by publicising. For a common never again seen Titan, its face is on a lot of the merchandising. It even has its own scale attraction at Universal Studios Japan. It's the centrepiece of the place. It's not iconic enough for this sort of treatment, so why is it? Finally though, there's a strange bit of imagery in the second opening, and I mean yes it is just an opening and it doesn't mean a lot, but it's stay stayed in my mind. I mean, that's just Armin doing a bit of badass titan slaying, right? Right? Well, yeah. Until you realise, that's human blood. It's not evaporating like titan blood does. Armin is either covered in the blood of his comrades, or hunting people. And we've seen innocent Armin covered in the blood of his comrades. Eh, his expression, it ain't that. Armin seems to be the catalyst to Eren's transformation, encouraging him to harness his titan abilities. It's important to note that Eren is not the narrator of his own story. The voice of the narration is Armin's. So, whether he's evil or not, there's definitely more than meets the eye of this kid. He knows more than he is laying on, and I'll bet anything that the future of this show lies with him. Thank you for watching.